Welcome to part two of the Global Heritage of the American People prior to 1500 unit. I'll just call it the Global Heritage Unit from now on. Uh, this second section is about the early Americans. It's about the early American civilizations of the Inca and the Aztec. There we go. Early American civilizations, the culture of the Inca and Aztec. Over here on the left, we have a map. You were going to see that map quite a bit. It shows where the Inca were located, which is down here in South America in the Andes Mountains, and also where the Aztec were located, here in central Mexico, today's Mexico City. All right, uh, the Aztec and Inca Empire are two early American civilizations that existed in Central and South America. An empire is basically many lands ruled by one leader. So um, when one group, one group of people, one leader controls different cultures, different groups in a large area of land, that's considered an empire. Now, these civilizations and other groups of Native Americans developed different and unique cultures. And you'll see through this, this year that cultures were different, mainly due to the geography or the environment and the resources that they had. So, depending on how a, what the person can find in their environment to use to survive, say, uh, resor natural resources like um, oil, trees rocks, whatever they can find, that's going to change their culture. Culture includes a people's language, customs, religion, government, economy, traditions, types of shelter, foods, clothing, etc. It's the way that people live, and we're going to be discussing that at length during class, so make sure you're there. Now let's look at the Aztec Empire. Um, the Aztec Empire was in control of central Mexico between 1300 AD and 1535 AD. It's located in central and southern Mexico. Their capital city is called Tenochtitlan and in its present-day Mexico City uh, they created a very strict legal code. They were um, they, they had a good eye for the heavens, but they created a 365-day calendar based on the movement of the earth. They created a writing system. Uh, they built an irrigation system for crops. They were very religious, and they uh, were polytheistic, which you all know from last year. Uh, that means that they believed in many gods. And one of the very interesting features of their religion is that they used human sacrifices to satisfy their gods. And not just one or two here and there, but they were basically slaughtering people at alarming rates. Up to 20,000 people a year were killed for their religion. Um, they, and, and to meet that need of sacrifices, they conquered neighboring tribes and enslaved them. So the Aztec were quite bloodthirsty. At the same time, though, their culture was very advanced, and you'll see that in a, in a video about them as we go through this unit. The Aztec had social classes, too, and we'll talk about social classes in a moment, but their classes were ruler, priests and nobles, warriors, merchants and artisans, farmers, and at the very bottom, they had slaves. All right, here is the location of uh, the Aztec Empire in Central America. Notice it's just south of the United States, the present-day present United States, south of Texas, basically smack in the, well, in southern Mexico, kind of in the middle of Mexico. Their cap the capital city of the Aztec Empire was called Tenochtitlan. And it was very interesting because it was built in a lake, in the middle of a lake. And it's kind of hard to build on water, but the Aztec figured out a really interesting and ingenious way to do it. Um, so from this lake, they launched their military campaigns, their enslaving of other tribes, their um, tribute collection, meaning they collected taxes from other groups around them. 
and since they they ruled so many different groups, they were filthy rich with gold and tribute, food, whatever could be used as, as to be taxed, they took it. Um, so yeah, the warfare was important because they needed a constant supply of human sacrifices, and those sacrifices were sent to the capital of Tenochtitlan in the middle of Lake Texcoco. Here's an image of that capital city. In parts of it you can still see today, but it's basically Mexico City, the largest city in the world, um, surrounding it, and it's kind of gross today. Back then, gross for different reasons. Mainly human sacrifices, the blood, the bodies, the stench, were found in these great temples in the capital. Um, but again, this city was built on an island in the lake, and over time, it outgrew the small little island. So um, the, the Aztec added on using this really neat way of building that you'll see in a video tonight. Uh, Chiampas, they were floating gardens built on the surface of the lake. And these Chiampas, the way that they made them, they would lash reeds together, tie them together, and then fill them in with dirt. And that's basically how they made the rest of the land for the uh, for the city just fill in with dirt uh, so on these Chiampas they could grow crops and again these people after 7000 AD they knew how to grow crops so they would survive that way by uh, by growing crops corn beans and squash and peppers potatoes etc on the left, you see an image of the Aztec society and the social classes. And on the right, you see some nifty images of different members of those classes. So the Aztec world, the Aztec empire, was ruled by an emperor. Under the emperor were priests and nobles. And you see there's a line that divides uh, different groups. Um, the priests ruled certain parts of the empire, the nobles ruled other parts. Um, they, they ran different classes. Next there were warriors who defended the empire and their main role as far as relation to the priests was that they captured prisoners for religious sacrifices. And I'm gonna ask you, you know, the warriors, what was their relation to priests? What was their relation to nobles? So the warriors, they would collect sacrifices for the priests, and they would defend the nation, or the empire, for the nobles. Below them were artisans and merchants, the people that made goods for the Aztec empire. Below them are farmers, that was most of the population. Their job was to supply the empire with food. And then slaves. Uh, slaves were used to do a lot of the heavy lifting, the building of these play, of the, the great city and other cities, the building of the, the uh, grand temples and amazing buildings. So everybody had their place in the Aztec Empire. If you didn't have a place in the Aztec Empire, you probably got your heart cut out by the Aztec priests. So let's take a look at human sacrifice. <laughs> Um, sacrifices were used to keep gods happy, and again, there were many gods in the Aztec Empire. All were bloodthirsty and wanted human blood. And the people that would be used for sacrifices were prisoners that were captured in battle, or just people that volunteered for it. Now, I personally wouldn't volunteer for it, but it was probably a great honor to be sacrificed to the gods. Um, slaves were not used for sacrifices, because slaves were used for other things. They were used to build the empire, to build buildings, to do things. If you kill the slaves, then nothing gets done. So keep that in mind. Um, the way that these sacrifices were performed, you can find really good videos on YouTube about it. I feel kind of sick after watching so many of them. But look at the bottom left. You see a picture there of a heart being ripped out from this guy's stomach through his stomach. That's how it was done. And this knife, this obsidian blade knife, would be used to um, cut open a person's stomach. Then the priest would reach up, grab the heart, yank it out. 
Easy peasy. Uh, obsidian is a kind of stone, and nowhere in here do you see metal being used, because the Aztec did not have metal. Other than gold, they just didn't have metal, that technology to forge and, and make metal tools. Aztec had a huge amount of gold, silver, and precious stones. They made jewelry, plates, cups, statues, whatever, um, out of gold, silver, and stone. This wealth made them a target of other people who wanted to steal their riches, but they had a very powerful uh, military, so their military was good at protecting all of the riches of their empire. Next, we're going to look at the Inca Empire. They were a powerful empire in South America between 1200 AD and 1535 AD. They were located in South America along the uh, Pacific Ocean and way up in the Andes Mountains. Very high mountains, very rugged terrain. And so because it was such a large, uh, spread out empire and difficult to travel through, it had to be organized and they had an extremely organized government led by a king. The king was worshipped as a god, and so the people really worked hard for him. They listened to him, they did what he said, and they made the Inca Empire successful. Uh, there were many tribes that lived in the Inca Empire, but they were all controlled by one king. Um, the Inca did a lot of things that were really neat, that were great engineering feats. And we know the Inca as great engineers. They built a lot of roads and bridges in the Andes Mountains. They built terraces on hills for farming, and we'll show you a picture of that. And they invented a writing system using hieroglyphics. And in general, hieroglyphics are a system of writing that uses pictures and symbols to represent words and ideas. And you know hieroglyphics from Egypt last year. Well, this year you're going to learn that other groups had hieroglyphics. The characters are not the same, but the idea that pictures being used for writing or to represent words is universal. Again, here's the location of the Inca. They are located in South America, in the Andes Mountains. Here's an image of terrace farming. The Inca would dig out chunks of uh, the mountainside to make them flat so that they could plant crops. And that's how they solved the problem of planting their crops in such a mountainous, rugged terrain. Again, that's terrace farming or steppe farming. And the Inca built some amazing cities. They And, and again, you'll see this in another video that highlights uh, this, this city of Machu Picchu. Um, it was built on top of a mountain, so a lot of the stone was transported up and up and up mountains and then laid in place so precisely that even today, six, seven, eight hundred years later, it's still there and you can't even put a credit card in between the rocks. It's so, they're so tight. Um, the Inca had a lot of gold. They used their gold for jewelry and artwork. And this thing here is a llama or an alpaca. I don't know the difference, but they're in the same family. And notice here they had them as well. Now neither the Inca or the Aztec had wheels. They didn't use the wheel, they used animals to do their work, to move their goods or people. And so um, just an interesting food for thought. And llamas also were seen as a, a very important animal, a religious symbol even. So, um, gold, llamas, think Inca Empire. And that's it. Good luck.